Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. A few days ago I went to a local flea market looking for some random stuff to take a look at. And I came up with this rather interesting unit. It is a LED light fixture which is rated at 300 watt with 100 pieces of 3 watt LEDs. Um, as you can see the color is a nine band. I actually have to admit, I didn't really know what this is supposed to mean until I looked it up in at the internet and found out that this device is usually used to grow wheat, which is highly inaccurate and highly permitted in Germany. So I have to tell you, I do not grow wheat at home. So. This is just random that I found this and well, I bought it for around 50 euros and uh, thought I could use it as some upgrade for my workbench lighting. Well, no I can't because it is a grow light and it emits a nice pink and bluish color which wouldn't be so suitable for taking videos I guess. But I definitely need an update to replace this uh, kind of defective LED panel I have mounted right beneath the camera. Um, at least to get rid of this strange reflections I get in everything I record. <coughs> Ugh, what a what a noise. Um, so I thought, well, we could take a look inside and maybe we could exchange these LEDs for some cheap Chinese 3 watt LEDs. So let's get started. At first I would like to take a look at the actual wattage this device is applying. Um, I have my power meter here at hand. At the moment it's showing 0 watts as expected. But when I plug this in Let's see what we get. Uh, you see it is a beautiful pinkish color and it is noisy as hell. And as I actually expected, we only get around 150 watts, not the promoted 300 watts. So let's switch this noise maker off because it is quite annoying. It's like some kind of really huge blower behind me just this two tiny fans it's impossible that those little things can make such a noise but well i guess we should take a look inside so let's unscrew this cover by the way the soldering iron is already heating up so we can get into some nice soldering action by exchanging 100 LEDs <laughs> right now. This will be so much fun, yay! So let's take a look inside. Ah. Oh, this is interesting. We actually have. Uh, are you serious? Okay, I can see four separate LED power modules and two really noisy fans. They are. Well Sun Fan model number FD08025T1H 12 volts at 0 0.15 amps. They are quite noisy for that little ratings. Um, oh nice, look at this telephone wire used uh, for the 
mains cabling and totally inaccurate red and black wiring colors instead of the usual blue and brown ones. Um, as I said, we have three, uh, four separate power supplies. At first we have this one at the top, which will be for the fans only, as it is just outputting 12 watts. It is a HP012A. Yes, output is 12 volts DC at 1 amp constant current. And as it seems, yeah, it's just one channel. Um, at the sides we have LED power supplies. I'm trying to slide this one out, which isn't working at all. And I would bet that they are rated for around 50 watts. And there is no ra rating written on it. No, it's not. It's a model number NLGI60XY060A. They are outputting 65 to 19 volts DC with a constant current of 500 milliamps. This is, well, around 40 watts for everyone, I would guess. So it's no surprise that we are only, only, getting 150 watts out of, out of this light fixture. Um, I'm not quite sure if I, do, if I should take one of those apart and take a look inside, because I really want to re reuse this light fixture. Um, but it seems like they are just, they are just hold together by this locking case. So it should be not a problem to take a look inside. No, it's, it is opening up. Very nice. So let's open this one. And there we have it. A really, really basic power supply with, well, actually it seems like there's no regulator I see. This is odd. And it's just hold in place by retaining clips and some celestic glue. So I'm trying to pry this out of here. And there we have it. We have a little controller IC, which is a BP3319MB14D13A. I have no idea what that is supposed to be. And we have a whole lot of um, a whole lot of resistors, which I guess are used to control the current flowing through the LEDs. Who knows? Beside of that, we have a nice clearing path for the mains isolation slot, uh, for the mains isolation. So no problems at all. And well, beside of that, it is really basic power supply. Nothing spectacular whatsoever. Interesting. Let's reassemble this and try to get to the LEDs, which could be a little critical as I see lots of glue around here. I don't know if you can see it right now, but at the edge of this aluminium uh, PCB, there's really some thick some some thick so uh, glue sausage I don't know what you how, how you how you say it it's just a really big string of glue celastic glue and this will be a pain in the ass to get out of there 
and I just noticed that I mounted this the wrong way. So get that back in place. Put the lid back on, which is the case is actually quite big for the amount of parts they uh, which are inside. Hmm. I wonder if they use the same casing for other uh, other power ranges as well. Where is my screw? Where's my screw? By the way, those metal strips they are using to retain this whole assembly are really sharp at the edges. It is really not nice to touch it. So, how can I... Ah! I just noticed that there are some connectors used. So I can disassemble this whole uh, this whole power supply unit and disconnect it from the LEDs, which is quite nice done, nicely done. So I can put this out of the way and just take a look at this LED assembly while trying to get rid of this damn glue stuff to get inside this assembly. This could take a while. Maybe I'm going to fast forward and flip this around. And as we can see, this is just a, as we expected to be, this is just a aluminum core PCB with a whole bunch of <laughs> a whole bunch of LEDs and every LED has a little diode at his side. Hmm. Well let's try to disassemble one of those. But at first I should take a look inside this package to see if the LEDs I bought <laughs> actually fit this panel. So one moment please. By the way, I guess it could actually be interesting to measure the current going through the LEDs if it is really the 500 milliamps. So I reconnected one of those I reconnected one of those power supplies and Stupid glue stuff. So I reconnected one of those power supplies and I am going to measure the actual current going through one of the LEDs by just by shorting one of them out with my multimeter. bad that it's only only going to 400 milliamps so I have to switch to the 20 amp range which isn't really appropriate appropriate if we are expecting 500 milliamps but well we don't want to kill our meter do we so let's connect this switch on the isolation transformer and take a look at the watts. Oh, this is so bright. We have 36 watts per LED fixture so we are more like 
120 watts at all. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is quite hard to see because the reflections. So I'm just reading it for you. At least I'm trying to. Five hundred and thirty milliamps. So, because the current sources are quite accurate, which is a bit of a surprise. And maybe I should mark the colors of the LED. But at first, let's take a look if I got the right LEDs. Oh, I just cut them open. Yes, it seems to be... Yes, yes, this is... This is actually matching. What is the polarity of those? I have no idea. Damn. I've never used this type of LED package. Is there any indication on where is the positive and where's the negative? Oh, oh yes, actually it is. Actually it is. Take a look at this tab here. If you, yeah, there I guess you can see it. There's a little plus stamped into the tab. That is fascinating. By the way, if you're wondering why I got two packs of a hundred LEDs, um, one package is one package is warm white, the other one is cold white. Um, since I have no idea what would be the best choice for uh, taking my videos without correcting the uh, white balance too much. I just thought I would go for a uh, warm white light. But I, I read so much information about this and hmm, I thought, well, if it doesn't work out like you're, like you're expecting it to be, you just can switch 100 LEDs again. This will be so much fun. So I'm starting with the warm white type and then we're going over and see if this is working out.
thanks to the wonders of post-processing, we now have a completely dried and relatively clean board to work on. But whatever, now we should get on with the soldering. I already emptied my two bags of warm white and cold white LEDs to the left and the right of the board. I have no idea which one is which, but actually it doesn't matter. If everything goes well, we will have a pattern of warm white, cold white, warm white, cold white, etc. Um, I got my trusty old Amazam heat sinking compound, which is around 20 years old, but works a treat. And I guess I will start by placing a thin layer of this stuff. Yeah, I said it's trusty, but it is kind of just giving me some nasty oil. Ugh. It seems to have split into its compounds a bit. Ah, this looks more like it. Yep, this is more like heat sink compound. I am used to know. And by the way, I am fast forwarding again, because this will be so terribly exciting, I guess. Where's my soldier? Where did I take this one from? Um, was it from left or was it from right? I guess it was from left. The left ones look... Yes, the left ones are a bit... A bit brighter from the... Uh, from the overall color of the resin. So... I don't know if you can see it on camera. One is more like a little bit of greenish, I don't know. And the other one is like a bright yellow in the color of the resin. So I guess the right ones will be the warm white. I mean the at my right side. And I have to crank up the temperature of my soldering iron, I noticed, because of this aluminium core PCB, which is quite a good heat absorber.
after thinking about it for some time, I thought, well, do I really need 300 watts of LED lighting cooking my neck while recording? And I thought, well, 150 watts should be plenty of light, um, at least for this small area I am going to light here. And so I, I considered to reuse these 50 watt LED drivers they are using in this fixture. Um, but since they can only output a maximum current of 500 milliamps, and a maximum output voltage is 90 volts. I had to recalculate how much LEDs of these real 3 watt LEDs can be driven by those LED drivers. And the conclusion was I can only use 24 LEDs in series to reach the 90 volts at 500 milliamps. And yes, this is what I came up with. Mainly I shunted out just the remaining LEDs after the 24. Um, so this should be work fine and I already tried it, yes, it works and it is insanely bright. To distribute the light a little bit more even, I also sanded this uh, plexiglass sheet, there you can see again my old light fixture, um, to give it a little bit of uh, even dissipation because now that we have just uh, a part of the LED panel in a now that just a part of the LED panel is lit, we have some dark spots between this, and I don't know if this is in any way visible while recording. So I go through the extra effort and sanded this thing down. I guess we should reassemble it and try it out. Reassembly will be really easy because this was really nice. They used um, this uh, quick connectors everywhere around. So this shouldn't be any kind of problem reassembling it even without the whatever that glue was. Well. There's some glue residue stuck in the screws, which is kind of annoying, but well. I also considered that I could use a bigger heatsink, but I will try to run the fans at a lower speed, so maybe I can reduce the noise of the whole thing without it overheating, because this is actually used, as I said, by growing some kind of special herbs. I do not want to grow with it. And this screw, it seems to be turning on. No, I, I can't stop, okay. Um, this was used to, uh, to grow special plants. And, well, actually it, it was lighting 24 seven. And since I do not want to light it that long, I guess this little heatsink and the big aluminium plate and the aluminium housing should be kind of enough to dissipate the heat which it is producing. So I will before before I will assembly uh, assemble it completely, I will stick my thermal probe through one of those uh, holes here, the venting holes and connect it with some tape to the heatsink so that I can measure the temperature while leaving the fans unconnected for at first and then if it is not sufficient um, I guess I will use the fans at a lower, uh, a lower rate maybe connecting them in series instead of parallel so that every, every fan only gets 6 volts should be working maybe not at least we will try. So, where is my thermocouple? Hello? Thermocouple?
This is actually not the thermocouple I was looking for, but it should work. It is perfectly straight and completely new. Well, at least it should it should work. It should display some kind of temperature, which I should take a control look at, I guess. I mean, would be kind of stupid to mount this when I see that it is broken. Uh, temperature. 25 degrees. Seems to be quite okay. It is rising. Seems to work. So let's mount this to... How can I mount this? Maybe like this. This should work. Where is my tape? There is my tape. Oops. I should try to stick something into this slot. Maybe one of those excess LEDs work. Or oh, they don't. Or I should could just bend the heatsink. Oh, so yeah, it's, it stays in there. That is good enough. So Let's reassemble the power supply. Don't forget to reconnect all those plugs. As I said at first, I don't want to connect the farm. So I just leave this micro power supply, which is dedicated to power the funds, completely unconnected. Connect this and this and this place this in here try not to squish any cables screw this back together hear any strange noises there is a helicopter flying around in front of my window I don't know why they are searching for me maybe it's because I bought a wheat grow light Reconnect this cable and we 
should try to to power this up and see what we get. And contact. This is so bright. This is so insanely bright. The camera is regulating it, but it is so damn bright. Um, don't get irritated by... I don't know if it, yes, you can see the screwdriver. Um, I'm actually looking at the camera display to see where I am with my screwdriver because this is so bright I can't look into the direction of it. Um, don't get irritated by this pattern here in the middle. It's just because this uh, printed circuit board is laid out to be used with a different range of uh, LED drivers. You can connect up to four LED drivers and using just those little shunt resistors we saw on the back side where the cables connect to uh, mount it on, on different locations or use different LED drivers to power certain LED combinations. And um, this, is, it's, uh, this is just the result of going like uh, one LED, uh, one LED driver is starting right here, going through there, circling completely around the whole PCB and starting again there, going there and switching back over here and going to this LED and it was just so nice to shunt from here to this LED so I got rid of this little internal pattern and I guess it is completely over it is much too bright for you to see the voltmeter uh, to the temperature I guess so yes we are rising at a really high rate so I guess we need some kind of ventilation but I guess this is just some tweaking action I will do off camera and after that I guess you will see me using this nice floodlight on my next video. I connected the fans in series and I guess this is much better. I hope you don't hear all too much from the fans. Um, I mean at this position it may be somehow audible but from a far bigger range it shouldn't be that audible I guess so well I guess I'm gonna try try this out and you can see in the next video how it worked out until then bye bye